Hello there. Hello there. Um, this is Henry Clark. Um, I had a song out on Band in a Box, right? And um, it's called For the Love of You, Band in a Box. Actually, PG Music actually put it up. So people wanted to know how I actually put the song together. And um, again, Band in a Box is a very powerful tool. I think the song is pretty good. I mean, you know, um, it gave me it gave me the ability to do some things that I hadn't normally thought about doing with a song. And I'm not a, I'm not a musician per se. You know, I'm really not a musician. I have an ear for music, but I'm not a musician. I don't read, so Band in the Box was actually perfect for me. I don't I don't really play an instrument. I mean, I can play around, but I don't really play an instrument. But anyway, some people want to know how I put the song together. And the song went again. It was called For the Love of You. It's not on the Band in the Box site. And this is the song. And what was nice about it is that all of the instruments, everything you hear, was generated from Band in the Box real tracks. Every single thing you hear, nothing else is added. So I'm going to take you guys through how I put the actual song together because some people ask, how did I do that with Band in the Box? And again, Band in the Box is powerful, has tons and tons of features that I thought would help everybody if I put a little tutorial together as far as how I put this song together. Again, I'm only scratching the surface of what can be done in Band in the Box. But again, here we go. So I'm going to be looking away because I had to storyboard this thing just to try to get it so that everybody could understand what I'm doing. So again, I just played a little bit of the original for you, right? So I see, how did I actually put this together? Well, I think we're going to rebuild a song from scratch, right? So you can see how I put it together. And again, this only scratches the surface of what you could do with Band in the Box. So what would you have? You would have, if I didn't know, you would actually have a blank screen. Now, I did select a style of, of Easy Dire Pop because it kind of fit the song that I was trying to put together. But... You notice the screen here, and what you notice about it is that you've only got four instruments, five instruments, and there is nothing for melody, there's nothing for soloists. So this is actually how the song started out, and I have my trusty sheet music. I actually put the song together from sheet music, nothing else but sheet music. So I started the song, I started putting the chords in, right, and the song was in E flat. So let me go ahead and change my key to E flat. And I put some I put some chords in. Um, a flat major seventh was the first one, and the second one. Now on the the fourth beat, I wanted the G to play on the fourth beat, so I have to put a comma in here, right? And it's actually G plus because that's actually. And then it, next chord was C minor eleventh. C minor eleventh played for two chords. The next passage was A flat major seventh again, and I went from A flat major seventh again. The G, comma, G plus, C minor 11th. And for the last bar, what I had to put in, I actually had to go to the second half, which is three and four. And I actually had to put in uh, G minor 7th, comma, A flat major 7th. And then the act, that's the intro to the song. The actual song started on A flat major seventh with a B flat in the bass. And again, I'm just using the sheet music. I'm not trying to diagnose this thing. I'm just going through and looking at the sheet music, seeing what's going on here, what works, right? Um, next, it went to uh, G minor seventh, comma, A flat major seventh. And the next again went back to A flat major seventh with a B flat slash. I put a slash in if you change the chord of the bass note, B flat in the bass. And this is what it sounded like then. Just to give you a quick, quick spin of what it sounded like. Ah, what did I do? I actually also I brought, I brought the BPMs down to 100, and that was way too fast for what I wanted to do. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just type in 100 in here. So I'm just typing in 100 for my by beats per minute, and it's a song. I know it sounds a little bland at the moment, right? We could dress it up a little bit, but notice that the melody screen and the solo screen. I am still not using those particular instruments yet. So we go brush it up. So, and I'm not, you guys don't want to see me sitting here typing all the chords. Now, one thing I do in Band in the Box is I actually type in the whole song. You know, um, I don't I do not do a lot of repeats. And the reason why is because sometimes the patterns change up. And if it's a pattern that I like, I want to stick with that. So I don't want that to change when it's regenerated. So I type in the whole song that I want to do again. So, but that's up to you, however you want to do it. So again, this is what it looks like right now. So instead of me wasting time, you guys want to see me typing a bunch of chords, right? So what I did was I developed a quick tutorial. So I bring up the tutorial. And this is the tutorial of the song where I've typed in all the keys all over again. So all I did was just type the keys in. Just type the keys. 
So now here we have a clean sheet. Again, there's nothing, just just the chords type in. That's all we got going on right now. We just got the chords type in. No background vocals, no guitar uh, solo, nothing. Just straight chords typed in. And the pattern, of course. So again, that's just just straight, just straight, right? So the next thing I know, I said, okay, well, that's, you know, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like what's going on, right? But, um... I thought something was missing, like some background vocals, right? So I thought I'd put some background vocals in here. Just just something, not a three-part harmony in this song, right? So what I did was I went up to the Soloist tab, and I I'm select Real Tracks, Solo, Real Tracks, and I'm actually going to filter by vocal. I'm just going to type in vocal. Now, I do have a lot of, I have a lot of, um, a lot of a lot of packs. I have a lot of packs in here, right? But I wanted vocal three part vocal uh, three part EV eighty five. That's what I use. So I'm just gonna go ahead to three three part eighty five. I'm gonna generate this track. This is a real track, so I'm generate this track here. And, it, and the thing about it, what's really nice is gonna be these these three part harmonies are gonna be like right on pitch. And check them out. <laughs> See? So I got my I got my background vocals going on there, right? I'm going, oh, that's kind of cool there. You know, got my background vocals going on, right? Sounds better. Now, I thought a solo would be nice, right? A nice guitar solo, right? Kind of break it up, you know, like near the end of the song. So I wanted a nice guitar solo, right? So I'm going to go to the melody tab for the guitar solo. The reason why the melody tab is because most of the time guitar solos are based on, they're based on the melody, right? And I wanted something that was a lot of, not necessarily busy, but just a nice little smooth groove. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to filter again. I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in guitar. And I'm going to do an update, right? Which will give me all the guitars, right? And I wanted a, ni a nylon sound, right? So I'm going to go down here and try to get to the, the nylon. I can say I have a lot of, I have a lot of, um, I've been buying Band in the Box. I've been using Band in the Box for quite a few years, right? So, so bear with me there. Maybe I can type this in. Maybe I can get this in a little bit quicker. Let me try guitar, comma, space, nylon, and see if that'll get me a little bit quicker. Aha, there we go. And I wanted to use, um, I wanted to use country, I wanted to use country back. So I'm going to country back. Uh, I'm going to use 120. I thought about using 85. I think I'll use 120. So again, I'm going to generate my track again. And remember, we got a basic chord structure in. We've got our background vocals there, right? See, that's I think that's so smooth, right? So again, that's just that's just bringing in some um, some guitar, right? But I'm going to use it for the solo portion. I'm not going to use it throughout the song. I'm just going to use it for the actual solo portion. That's what I want to do. So how do I do that? Well, if I put if I if I bring in a, in background vocals and I bring in a solo guitar, right? Once I generate them, they're going to play all the way through. Eh, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first bar. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to bar settings. So once I go to bar settings, I go to bar settings. Another menu comes up. Make sure my, yeah, my menu. Yep, my menu comes up, and I'm going to mute the guitar, which is actually guitar for. So I'm going to mute that, but I'm also going to mute the background vocals. I don't want those playing at that time either, right? So again, if you notice now, if I generate. You'll hear my basic chord pattern, but you won't hear any guitar, and you won't hear any background vocals. Come on. <laughs> so, again, I've taken out the solo guitar because I don't want it to come in yet. And I've taken out the background vocals because I didn't want them to start yet. So I've got that. So, again, what I'm doing now is I'm actually arranging the song is what I'm doing. So, and if you notice, right, when I did that, a red line appeared over the first bar that it starts at. Oh, you'll, you'll get that red line when you make some changes to the bar. So I muted the guitar and I muted the um, the background vocals, right? So next, and, and oh, and also I brought the background vocals in just in kind of arranging the song. I brought the background vocals in around bar 18. So if I go right click on it and go to bar 18, and you'll see another menu come up. And there we go. And I'm, I want my background vocals to start again, but I wanted to start at bar 18. So now when I generate from, I'm going to generate from back here. Uh, 
and it's generating force. And let me just go ahead and just move it up forward. So again, I got the song playing. I wanted to back up over the start at bar 18. Now they're running. They're coming now. See? And, and I just think that's just great. That's just so exactly where I wanted it at, right? But notice, no solo guitar. Now I don't have a solo guitar yet, right? That's because I didn't want my solo guitar to start until bar 77. So when I go over and hit a bar 77, I do the same thing. I go to bar settings. And this is going to bring up my menu again, my bar menu. And I want the guitar, I want the solo guitar to start at bar 77. So now what's happening is that as I go through the song, and I'm, I'm not going to go back too far, but another thing what was interesting is also is that what I did was I made a, a chord change. I'm sorry, I made a, I made a, um, not a, I made a key change. So I made a key change around bar 77 because it was in E flat, right? So I said, nah, it's playing around. And it was actually by mistake, to be honest with you, it was an accident. And <laughs> it wasn't intentional. But as I was rolling through, right, I said, ah, let me see. So let's see. Let's see what happens if I change a couple of chords around a little bit to kind of take some of this sameness away from it. So I'm, I'm not going to take you through all of that. Let's go, let's go a little bit down deeper. What's going to happen right here? He changing. So, yeah, I think that's just neat, right? So you've got that going on. So again, we've taken, what we've done is we've taken and we've changed some of the patterns over here. So that's how I put that part together, right? So now what we got, we've got our song, we've got our uh, solo part, and we got our vocals. And I'm not sure I like those backup vocals in this one. I kind of, I think I made a pick the different backup vocal than I picked before, but they're okay for demonstration purposes. Cause I really wanted to show you just how I, how I create background vocals in a band in the box, but I wanted some accents also, right? It's always nice to have a nice little drum roll before you come into a, 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 new, a new passage, right? So again, I had my intro and bars one through eight, so I thought I what I was wondering is I want to have a um, I want to have a, a roll and a crash right before you know as, as bar nine started, and I put about some other rolls and crashes in here to save time right. But notice when I do that I can also go here and I can also change what what the snare and the bass are doing at that point. And now if I do that I get a, I get a red line again right. So again so I've got this going on now. So I'm gonna do a quick generation here. And what you will hear is you will hear some type of roll and a crash after we get past. It, it does it before bar nine starts. And that's why I wanted that right at the end of the bar. So all of this is intro stuff that's playing right now. Right? This is intro. And it just goes off for eight bars. And the crash helps to kind of set the song up, set me up so that I know when it come in. Um, So you see, so I got that going on, right? So I got everything there. So basically, everything is there. We've done the entire song, basically. You know, all I got to do is I got to lay the vocals down, of course, right? But musically, we put the song together. And again, it's really, really simple. The things that I've done, I added some vocals, background vocals. I added a, a lead guitar that gives it a different flavor from a solo perspective. I want to do that to break it up a little bit. But what's also neat is that I can take and I can actually change the key. So again, when I had it and when I have it in E flat, but I said, nah, you know what? I want maybe I want to sing it in a different key. So let me put it in, I'm gonna put it in D flat and see what it sounds like. And if I put it in D flat, everything's gonna transpose. Because these are real tracks and it's just how it's cool, it's really cool how they actually transpose. So the keys are transposing now. All the instruments are moving up, right? So now it's going to be in D flat. So let's see what it sounds like in D flat, which is really cool because, again, you can type a song out, right? Maybe it's not in your key. Maybe you need to play around with the keys a little bit, you know? I think it's really cool that you can do that.
a different key, right? But now I gotta sing it different, you know, right? <laughs> So I know I ain't doing it all that great, but that's okay. I can do it better, believe me. <laughs> anyway, just for demonstration purposes, show you how I can actually go back in and change the key. So I can put it in a different key. And again, you might do some music for someone. You bring a vocalist in, right? Maybe it's not his key or it's not her key. Boom. Instead of typing the whole song out all over again, you can go ahead and you can change the key. So that's another nice thing about it. You can also play the song, play the guitar solo. I can change that solo, right? Maybe, again, right now we've got... We've got a guitar solo. So when we go to bar 77, get close to bar 77, I'll stop from bar 75, resources that I'm using right now. So again, that's guitar, right? Well, you know what? I'm not sure I want to say guitar. I think I want to change this. So I'm going to find a real track. We'll find another real track. And we're going to see what it sounds like with a sax. Let's try a saxophone. Sax is always kind of cool. So we're going to go sax. And we want to, let's try a soprano sax. So let's try a soprano sax. See, I'm typing out here. I'm typing soprano saxophone. What do we get? Oh, we got some, some, some nice, I'm, I want a smooth jazz. Let me see if we got a smooth jazz. And I'm going to use smooth jazz. Try this, let's try this one here. Let's generate this track. So we're going to, again, we're now we're changing it. Yeah, so now we're changing it to saxophone. Let me go back in and grab this again because I messed that up. I really messed that up. <laughs> okay. Um, again, we want to use we want to use a saxophone, right? Yep, we want to use a saxophone. I'll generate this track, and we're generating it now with a sax. So we've actually taken out the nylon guitar, and we're putting a sax in. And notice how many instruments were in there, right? Again, Bandit Box is super powerful, a lot of capabilities, a lot of things that you can do, right? And again, we don't want to start all the way back at the beginning. Right? Let's just go all the way down to bar, say seventy four or something like that. See if we can get it going here. Let's see what it sounds like with a saxophone. I like that. I like that. I guess it's really cool, you know. So you can play with a sax. And if you like a saxophone solo, you can also, if you regenerate, you can actually regenerate it to do something else, play it differently, right? But you can also freeze it so it will always stay. So I'm going to freeze the track. Freeze it. Freeze it. <laughs> wow. Freeze the saxophone track, right? So what else is neat that we can do in here in Band in the Box is also, we can try this. Let's try Let's try a different style. So let's, we can try this song. Uh, let me go. I've got some favorite styles I put down here. So let me see. This. Let's see what we get if we put try this. We're gonna put it in reggae. Let's see what happens if we put it in reggae. Oh man, we're gonna put it in reggae and see what it sounds like. Um Hey, that's not bad. I kinda like that the reggae, the reggae sound, you know. So that's it in reggae, right? So we're doing a reggae. So we 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 had it regular, right? We're doing a reggae. Now we can also try to do it. Maybe you maybe you just want to use it as an instrumental, right? So let's try. I'm gonna try it in in, in um, just straight smooth jazz. Let's try to straight smooth jazz. See what we can come up with. But notice we can actually change the styles, you know, which is really really neat because now you can take any song, put it in any style you want to put it in. Got to play with the styles, of course. But now you can change the style. Jazz chords, and that's just playing those jazz chords, and that's playing those nice builds for you, you know. So again, so that's it in smooth jazz. We did reggae, we did smooth jazz, we did pop. So again, so I just want to give you, a, a, like I said, show you how to do that. And again, Band in the Box is extremely powerful. I have only scratched the surface of what this thing will do. This this product will do a lot, has a ton of functionality in it, right? But people had asked, how did I put For the Love of You together? That's how I did it. I put it in Band in the Box. I played with some samples. I played with some styles. 
um, styles that I think that I would like and played with some of the features in it. I love the background vocal feature. I love the solo feature. And again, this video is long enough. What I'm going to do next for my next part two of this video is I'm going to show people how I actually dragged it into my DAW because what I do is I actually use Sonar Producer to do that. And one of the reasons why, of course, is because um, what I like is I like the fact that I can sing through my DAW better and I actually sing it to my Tascam and drag it over to my DAW. And the reason why I do that is because of latency. Sometimes when you try to sing through a computer and you've got stuff running in the background, you'll start getting some latency. Um, so I choose to do it. You know, you can do it in real bad if you want to, but I choose to do it through my DAW, drag it over into, I'm sorry, do it in my task cam, drag it over into my sonar, my DAW. But I can show you guys, I'm going to show you guys in part two of the video, which will be out a little bit. I haven't made it yet. It'll be out a little bit of how I actually used the features of Band in a Box, the DAW integration of how easy, I mean, it's really, really simple to take and drag the, the files over into any DAW. So again, that hopefully this helps you all who are um, trying to figure out some of the features of Band in a Box. Again, there are tons more, tons more. This is just something really simple. If you like it, you can always subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Of course, I'll be putting more stuff out there, Band in a Box, and I do other stuff too. But again, um, I, the people at PG Music actually like what I put together. I'm getting started getting requests of how I put the song For the Love of You together. And um, hopefully this helps you in your in your um, use in your usage of Band in the Box. Again, so many features there. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in part two, which is about um, digital audio workstation or DAW integration. Bye. Thank you.